so welcome back to my channel. Today we are in a full fall mood. It's like cozy fall weather outside in the 60s. I'm wearing a sweater. I needed a jacket on top of this. It was so nice out. So we are wanting something really super cozy in fall. And this week we had butternut squash raviolis and I forgot how much I love butternut um, squash flavors. And I love doing a risotto. Risotto is a super easy dish and you're making your own, or putting your own ingredients in it so you know it's gonna be good for you. Um, and you can do it with a bunch of different dishes, chicken, whatever protein you have. And it's a nice little way to spice up a simple rice dish. So I'm making a butternut squash risotto. Super creamy, super yummy, cozy, perfect fall vibes. And I'm so excited to make this. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy um, learning how to make this butternut squash risotto. I'm super excited to make it. It's a perfect day for it. Cozy fall vibes. And let's get to it. So for risotto, um, you want to have a broth mixture to slowly cook your risotto. So my mixture is just gonna be chicken broth and canned butternut squash. So I'm gonna mix four cups of chicken broth with a can of butternut squash and that'll be our broth mixture. So I'm gonna set the saucepan on medium heat. And I have four cups of chicken broth. So now I'm adding the can of butternut squash to my chicken broth over medium heat. And I'm gonna whisk it until the consistency feels less chunky and more smooth. And this is the perfect cozy fall Italian vibe recipe. This mixture already smells so good. Mmm. Even Duke is sitting right next to me. Porky puppy, because he can smell it. Dude, say hi. He already smells the butternut squash and he wants some. You want some? Maybe I'll give you some later, okay? And while that is heating up on medium heat, um, you just want it to be warm, the broth, so when you add it to your rice, it doesn't make your rice cold. Um, so while that's heating up, I'm just gonna chop up my prosciutto and my onion and my parsley for the recipe. So I'm just gonna chop up about four or five slices of risotto, and it's going to give that risotto a nice salty taste when you have the sweet butternut squash. It's gonna be so good. I like to call risotto the Italian bacon for anyone who's never had risotto before. If you like bacon, you're going to love this. It's almost like a gourmet Italian ham. The thing about risotto is that it is even better with leftovers. Dude, I know, isn't it? It's so much better. Sorry, my dog is barking in the background. Okay, now I'm gonna just chop up a small onion. Dude, I know, you're excited about this risotto, but you need to be quiet. Um, Matt and I just went, well, I can't tell you the full thing yet, but we have a surprise coming up. Woo, these onions are making me cry. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn my Dutch oven pot, which by the way, this is the best Dutch oven. You can use it for sauces, soups, as like a slow cooker. You can make bread in this in the oven, so you can put this in the oven. Used it for my tomato, it's, it's awesome. I got it for 30 bucks off of Amazon. Hi, let's say hi again. I got this for $30 off of Amazon. It's equivalent to a... So I just drizzled some olive oil in the pan, just enough to coat the pan. I'm going to add our chopped up prosciutto, and I want to get it nice and brown. Yum. No. I'm going to add my one small onion, or half of a larger onion, along with two tablespoons of butter. Along with two tablespoons of butter, and again, I'm going to let the onion brown. Excuse me, that's my dog <laughs> With his new toy. Ready? It's a big, yeah, it's not a little Halloween donut, it's a big one. Okay, so now I hear my onion butter prosciutto mixture sizzling up, and I'm still on about a medium heat. So we're gonna let the onions cook. Again, that's gonna take another two to three minutes. 
So now my mixture is brown. You can see the steam coming off the pan. And I'm going to deglaze the pan with a white wine. Make sure it's kind of a dry white, white wine. I'm gonna do about two thirds of a cup. You're going to add your arboreal rice. You need one and a half cups. I just got this from my local grocery store, um, Harris Teeter Arboreal Rice, and it's the typical rice you wanna use for risotto. It absorbs all the liquid that you cook with it and essentially all the flavors. So we're going to slowly introduce our butternut squash chicken broth mixture. So it turns into this delicious, nice, almost like a puffy pasta rice creamy dish. And like I said, this is amazing for those, you know, nights that you need something quick and you already have it in the fridge and you're just going to add a protein with it. Or honestly, you could eat this by itself. And you can change your risotto so many ways. It's such a good seasonal dish where it's a staple throughout the week, but you just change your ingredients. So my dog is right beneath my feet because he wants me to throw the donut while I'm trying to film this video. It's perfect timing, Duke. I love you. Okay, so most of the wine is absorbed into the rice. I'll show you what it looks like. So it's mostly absorbed into the rice. So now I'm going to slowly introduce my butternut squash chicken broth mixture. Duke, stop! Oh my god, this smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. Um, please share um, with me, whether it's on social media or just send it to me if you make this, because, oh my God, you're gonna love it. So, half a cup of the butternut squash and chicken broth at a time. So I'm just going to add it to my dish, and I'm just going to stir it in. And I'm about medium, medium low heat here, because you want it to slowly cook. It happens fairly quickly, which is okay. You just want to slowly introduce the mixture and you're going to add the whole butternut squash chicken broth mixture. So it's already absorbed. So I'm just going to add some more. Oh my god, this is going to be delicious. I'm so excited. You have the prosciutto smell. It's like really good bacon essentially. You have the white wine aromas and now the butternut squash. Like that this is it. This is a nice fall meal. And it's so different. You can't get this at Trader Joe's, which also I will have to show you at the end some fall staples I got from some grocery stores around here that if you don't have time to do this much cooking, you can still make it fun in the fall in the middle of the week. So I'm gonna slowly add my mixture. So I, I'm stirring and when it absorbs, I will add another half a cup. And you're gonna to continue to do that until you run out of your chicken broth mixture. And you're gonna see how puffy your risotto rice is going to be. And it's going to be, oh, so delicious. I can't wait to eat this. And this is gonna take about 30 to 35 minutes to do. This, this slowly add half a cup at a time until the rice absorbs it all. Oh, and that's just what makes it so much better. See how the rice grains are actually getting bigger because they're just absorbing all the flavor. Oh my gosh, this almost looks like a mac and cheese because of the color of the butternut squash. Oh, this would also be really good with pumpkin. Um, so maybe I'll have to try that next time. But I cannot wait to see the completed product. It is looking so good. So see how I don't have much liquid in the pan when I'm stirring it, so that's when I add another half a cup. And I just use, it's kind of hard with one hand, but I just add it with a half a cup. I just add half a cup. One at a time. And that is Mel playing the drink in the background while I'm trying to film a video. Welcome to my life. Okay. I'm almost done. It's been about 30 minutes. So in the middle of me adding my butternut squash chicken broth mixture, I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt to your liking. I always do the salt over the left shoulder for good luck. I don't want any bad luck. 2020's already been enough. We don't need any more. And some pepper. 
And then at the end, you can always taste test and see if you need more salt and pepper. I love a lot of pepper in my dishes. Gives it so much flavor. The more simple things are, the better they taste. This is looking so good. I'm so excited. Does anyone else get super excited over food? So I finished adding my chicken broth butternut squash mixture and you can tell the risotto is completely absorbed the mixture because when I go like this, you don't see liquid at the bottom of the pan. Oh, it's looking so pillowy and so good. So next step is to add a bunch of Parmesan Reggiano or Pecorino Romano. Any sort of hard Italian cheese that's really salt. So we're making it snow over our risotto. Doing about a cup to two cups. The more you add, the more creamy it is. I'm even making it snow on the ground for Duke to eat. Duke is super excited. Is he biting your ankles? Yes. Stop, Bubba's. Oh, but look at it. It's gonna be so good. Doesn't it almost look like a mac and cheese consistency? You could say this is like an Italian mac and cheese. Look at that. Look, do you see all the cheese just being stringing there? I'm gonna add more because it needs to be more creamy. Matt, can you, you can't even stand how good this looks. This is my cameraman, so I hope he's doing a good job. Comment down below if I need to hire somebody new. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, if you grate slower, it gets bigger chunks. Okay, I think that should be good. Look at that, look at the cheese melt all within that dish. Mmm. Who wants to be the taste tester? Is it Matt or Duke? Definitely not Duke, he didn't deserve it. <gasps> this is delicious. This is definitely a fall staple I am going to be making every year. It's, like I said, the sweetness from the butternut squash with the saltiness from the prosciutto and the Parmesan. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This is like Italian comfort food on a whole other level. You can add this with any protein, eat it by itself. This is perfect for parties, perfect for a potluck. Mmm. This is so good. The risotto is so pillowy, but all the butternut squash and the cheese makes it super creamy. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at that. Don't you just want to eat that whole spoon? Matt, do you approve? Good, dude. I mean, Matt will eat anything, so pretty so, much no, will I. I won't, I won't eat olives. He won't eat olives, that's correct. And I mean, I, I won't eat, I don't really oh my gosh, or pickles. Wait, you eat fried pickles, but not pickles? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense, it tastes like pickles. No, it doesn't. What does it taste like? Oh, the fried has a good, it's nice to know what you add to these dishes. Like you need to watch that show that Zac Efron has on Netflix. Do you remember the name of that show? Uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. Anyway, one of the episodes is about this group of people that live to be 105 years old. They're like the oldest people to live in the world. And they looked into their diet. Centaurians. It, centaurians. That's the name of the people that live the longest. That's also do crunching ice in the background. They lit, eat a low protein, high carb, and I think low fat diet. This actually would be good for like a Friendsgiving, something different. I know that's not really coming up, but it's, it'll be here before we know it because it is already halfway through September and time is just flying. You're not gonna regret making this. It is so good. And I can't wait to show you more recipes that I have. Thanks for watching. Bye.